Oh, it's Nicky, isn't it? Yes. I just came from your place. The landlady told me you were out. Oh. Uh, well, I was just going for a walk along the canal to a pub. Would you like to join me? Oh, yes. That'll be nice. Good. Right to the north of England and um, west to Wales. Really? But uh, I usually content myself with quarter of a mile from here. he wouldn't do that. No, he wouldn't. But he is very unhappy. Yes. He did believe the letter I sent explaining. Yes, but... But it doesn't answer the main charge, does it? That I was at best an uncaring bystander at his mother's breakdown. No. But unless he can work that one through, he's not going to be happy with himself. Well, at least no one's going to be able to say that you stood aside and let two obstinate people hurt each other. I wasn't aware that what I was doing was protecting my position. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't mean it like that. I meant it as a compliment. Well, um, what exactly was your aim in coming? To get you two together. Or to bang our heads together? No. You can do that very adequately for yourselves. Well, then, ask him to come. I'd be delighted to see him. We came last time. Oh, you want me to come to you? Yes. Yes. Well, then invite me. Well, that's marvellous. I'm so grateful, Helen. I'll bring her round soon. Tomorrow, then. Bye, then, and thank you. We look like the cat that just ate the cream. I feel like that. I found the most wonderful place for you. Oh, a lunatic asylum. Come in. Oh, hello, stranger. Hello. Come in. I got myself a job today. Oh, that's marvellous. Congratulations. Oh, not really. It's a terrible job. And a very short term, I hope. What is it? An assistant in a video shop in Cross Street. Oh, well, it keeps the wolf from the door. Yes, precisely. Uh, but what worries me is that I'm not sure that it isn't the wolf that's keeping the shop. Hmm? And I wanted to ask you if you think that I'm breaking the law. I'm sorry to bother you professionally in the evening. Don't be silly. What's the problem? Well, he asked me if I had a P40 something. 45. Or... That's right. And um, when I said I hadn't, he was pleased at first and uh, said it would suit us both not to bother about national insurance and so on. But then he wanted me to prove who I was. It was all very mysterious. Hardly. I've no doubt he offered you a small wage. Fifty pounds a week. Oh, that's terrible. So why was he suspicious? Well, he just wanted to check that you weren't a tax inspector or a policeman. So it is illegal then? Strictly speaking, it is. But if it's only for a week or two, I shouldn't worry. Except about the terrible pay. Dear, it's all very complicated, isn't it? Well, it ain't the groves of Academe, that's for sure. You're never satisfied. All complaints to the managing director. What did your wife say when you got home? She was fast asleep. Mm, she probably used to it if I know you. Now, yeah. Tracy, what do you mean by that? Yeah, you've been writing up. Here's that geezer. Good morning. 
Morning. Um, I've forgotten your name. Brett. OK, Brett. Well, I'm Jack. This is Tracy. Um, no, actually, Brett is my surname. My first name is Edward. Thought, too. Wow. Brett's a sort of sexy name, isn't it? Oh, is it? So, uh, they call you Ted, do they? Um, well, I have been called Ted. OK, Ted, well, let's get started before the rush. Oh, for some uh, uh, Tracy, what kind of an attitude is that? We are at the sharp end of the communications revolution. Video is what it's all about. Now, come round here, Ted. Let's get started. Uh, where can I put my Mac? Just through there. The Kazi's on the landing. The Kazi? Uh, the bulk. Lavatory. Oh, thank you. Yeah, why not? He's not very with it, is he? Not very bright. How would you know? Gee! OK. Yes? Good. Well, Tracy here, she'll show you what to do. I've got some paperwork upstairs. They're the naughty ones. So I see. Lots of people want to take them out, but some are too shy. So they look and finally go out of the thriller or something. Are they any good? Mm, depends what turns you on, I suppose. That lot there's not up to much. Mind you, Jack does have some specials, you know. Well, hard stuff, violence, sex and that. He sometimes lets them out to people he knows. Oh, so it's it's not legal then? Mm, I don't know about that, but the owner of this shop doesn't know Jack's got them. The owner? Oh, so Jack doesn't own this shop? No, of course he doesn't. It's part of a chain, isn't it? Oh, I didn't know. So if he lets them out, he takes all the money from them, see? Yes, I see. Did you explain about the marked videos? You tell him. Look, when you get your video... Oh, I see, that's your game. No, I've just... <laughs> well, anyway, when you get your video, if it's got a blue dot in the corner like that, put it down on one of these cards. OK? And all the rest go down on them. Yes, I see, sir. I normally enter them on these cards, but the marked ones on these. That's right. What is the reason for that? Uh, I don't know. It's some, some sort of survey the company are doing, you know, on selected videos. Oh, I see. Right, I must be off. Good luck. Well, I can see we're not going to get trampled in the rush. Come on, Luke. Come on. We have to get Come back on. to the office. We've only been away an hour and a half. Yes. Well, I have work to do. Oh, I see. Those coitum omne animale triste est, hmm? Yes, actually, I am sad. It's supposed to make you happy, relaxed. That old Horace, he was an old cynic, you know. Well, maybe his mistress was fed up with rushed lovemaking, deceit. Oh, come on, Liz. I'm too old for all this. It was all right, kissing behind the bike shed at school when I was 15. Look, maybe I could get away for the weekend. We could go somewhere. Where? Well, we'll think of no, somewhere. No, I don't think so, Michael. I think it had better be the last time. Why? I've been through it all before. Because it isn't doing anything for me. Well, Beyond a basic sexual satisfaction, that is. Well, don't knock it. A lot of married couples can't even manage that. Well, if you must know, even that's not what it was. I'm surprised you haven't noticed that. The earth can't always move. No, but something should. At least for me, it should. To someone else? No. What about that new chap downstairs? It's a friendship, that's all. Oh, I see. Just good friends, huh? And what is that supposed to mean? Oh, Michael. He's 20 years older than I am, and he's very unhappy. And even I'm not that desperate. I'll have another like that, please. Well, if you'd like to choose one. 
Well, I've seen all that rubbish. Tame it is. Jack said he had some more like that. I'll see to this one, Ted. Did it uh, turn you on, then? Oh, yeah. It's all right. It's not the real thing, though, is it? Well, I wouldn't know. I never had it with five men hanging upside down from coat and cover. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you do, yeah? Yes, I just started this morning. Well, um... If you do get hold of the real stuff, you know what I mean? I'll always give it a go. Well, um, uh, Jack seems to take care of that department. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, being in the trade and that, I mean, if you do come across anything, keep me in mind. Yes, yes, all right. Hello, Terry. Been a good boy, have we? No, trying to flop me very poppy. Eh? My love to the wife. Yes. All right, Ted. Oh, yes. Any more like that, not in the catalogue, just uh, let me know. I'll deal with it. Jane tells me you're on a spot of bother. Oh. Well, um, oh, don't, don't mind me. I always come straight out with things, you know. Never have the knack of wrapping things up. Such a waste of time. <laughs> Left your husband, have you? Well, yes. Well, that's probably just as well. That's why I never married. Brought up in a house full of boys, always in the way. Men are all right to have fun with. They're quite decorative, or they can be. But they're such babies. Always want petting or bullying. And I, I just haven't got the patience. I kept my eyes open for one who could stand on his own feet. One or two possibilities, but it all seems so much bother. Yes. So, you see, now I'm spared the trouble of leaving him. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm so glad you've got a sense of humour. We shall get on splendidly, you know. <laughs> it's very kind of you to let me out oh, of Oh, nonsense. Great old house like this. Haven't been in half the rooms for years. Ah, here's the tea. I was just saying, we're going to get on splendidly together. Mary has such a sense of humour, full of fun. <laughs> Who's laughing? <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. How did it go? Oh, all right. I suppose a little strange. Actually, there was something else I wanted to ask you. Hmm? Would you like a drink? Oh. Yes. Yes, why not? Good. Thank you. Uh, please sit down. I'm afraid all I've got is whiskey. Is that all right? Mm. Well, a, a lot of water. What did you want to ask me? Well, I think my estimable employer is supplying pornographic videos. <laughs> Probably. He has a stock of specials which only he deals with. Oh, that's good. Well, if only he deals with them, then you won't be involved. Oh, well, that was what I wanted to ask well, I you. I suppose, strictly speaking, if you do know about it and you don't report it to the police, you could be an accessory before the fact. But in practice, if you don't touch them, I think you'll be all right. Oh. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to work. Oh, here's to getting home from it. <laughs> Actually, I'm beginning to realise what work is. It's very hard. Yes. Yes, I've never been conscious of selling my labour, you know, doing something in order to be paid. You were very privileged. Oh, indeed. So a happy man is someone who has talked somebody into paying him for what he'd be doing in any case. Well, that was me. <laughs> but now I'm very conscious of selling my time. You'll have to accept a whole new set of standards, Edward. Yes, I suppose so. You see, I always thought I was so sensitive. I could lecture on the horrors of Victorian boy chimney sweeps and bring tears to their eyes. I could encourage my students who were facing unemployment with the idea that at least they could read Shakespeare. Well, I can do that. And so far, 
I haven't opened a book. It's quiet, isn't it? Always is in the morning. Straighten them up. Oh, he's in a bad mood today. Always is in the morning. You were a teacher before you came here. Yes. Yeah. I can see you're the brainy type. Oh, and you? I thought I heard you saying to Jack yesterday that I wasn't very bright. Yeah, that's right. Brainy, but not quick, you know? Not exactly, no. There you are. That's what I meant. Yes, I see. I knew you didn't belong round here. Oh? Yeah. You learn to have quick reactions round here. You've got to move before you worked everything out, see? Oh, that's interesting. Do you ever see those animal programmes on the telly? I've seen some, yes. I love them programmes. All those animals, not the spiders, but the big ones, the lions and tigers and that. Yes. Well, they don't work it all out, do they? They just move. Yes, that's right, instinctive behaviour. Yeah, that's right, instinct. And you think that brains or education spoils that instinct? Well, that stands to reason, doesn't it? Yes, you're probably right. I'm just going upstairs. Have one for me. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Oh, sorry, I was, I was uh, sorry. Is that Ted doing all right? Yeah. You noticed anything? Well, like what? Well, you know, anything. No, he's doing all right. He's a queer one, though. How? Well, he just doesn't seem the type, that's all. Type for what? Well, for working here. Especially not for the miserable screw you're giving him. All right, all right. Has he been poking about? What are you on about, Jack? Sticking his nose in where it don't belong. Well, where could that be, for God's sake? Oh, you're no bleeding help, are you? Well, I don't know what you're on about, do I? Do you think he's old Bill? Oh, Bill! What, Ted? Well, you must be joking. You couldn't even ask him the time. He probably forgot to put his watch on. Yeah. <laughs> Is anything wrong? No, you don't want to worry about him. Do you seem so suspicious? He's always like that. When he buys a pack of cigarettes, he counts them, just to make sure there's 20. Oh, bloody awful day. Hardly worth staying open for. Had some extras, specials. They don't count. Nothing to do with this company. Right, I'm going to do the books up. Now, listen. As from next week, we're going to have to stay open later. Up our state. No. Otherwise, they'll close us. Will there be any more money? Yeah, I suppose so. I'll uh, stick another tenner on. Ten pounds? But uh, it's an extra 18 hours a week. Well, suit yourself. Otherwise, I'll get a girl in. Think about it. Good for you. Oh, sticking up for yourself. It's the only way. Well, if you need the money. Stick out for 20. You'll get it. You won't find anyone cheaper. Thank you. Will you stay? He sees me all right. But he is a hard man. I won't stay long, though. It suits me for a while. My boyfriend's in the army scene, Northern Ireland. So I don't go out much in the evenings. Oh, I thought that you and Jack... What made you think that? Uh... Well, I just assumed... He's married. Oh, I didn't know. You are a funny old stick. I have been out with Jack for a drink and that, but there's nothing serious. Anyway, it's none of my business. Well, he's like all men, really. That thinks he's onto a good thing, a bit of fun in the evenings. But he has to pretend, you know, that he feels all lovey and that. Well, of course he don't. But he thinks I wouldn't see him if I thought he wasn't serious. Well, it's stupid, isn't it? Because all I want's a drink and a bit of fun. So I'm using him, really. But he wouldn't enjoy it if he thought that. Do you think all men are like that? Well... I don't think they know what's going on, if that's what you mean. 
Most of the men around here go potty if they knew what their wives really thought about them. The men haven't got a clue. Stupid, really. Yes. Hello, Professor. Oh, Mrs. Haddon. I didn't know you had a video. Um, I don't. Nor have I, but my friend has. And once a week I go down there. We take it in turns to get the video. Oh, that's a good arrangement. Yes, it is. Now, what shall I take this week? Oh, not one of those. Oh, look, they've got Tess. I loved that. Oh, did you see it on television? No, I read the book, though, years ago. Very sad. Yes. wonder if Ella would like that one. I expect she would. She enjoys a good cry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was miles away. It's all right. Uh, that'd be a pound, please. No. Bye then, Professor. See you later. Yes, goodbye. Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry. What about? I've no idea. Well, anyway, I'm sorry. Know her well, do you? Oh, she's my landlady. And she doesn't know you work here. It's stupid. It's nothing to be ashamed of. But don't worry about it. If you've got things you want to keep private from your landlady, there's no harm in that. Jenkins, there's the lungs. And my name is Filton. I'm from the Borough Trading Standards Department. I have reason to believe that these videos are illegal copies. Illegal copies? Pirate copies, sir. By virtue of the powers invested in me under the Trades Description Act, I am taking possession of these videos. Jack! Why is it? You better come down, there's trouble. What the hell's going on? I'm a Trading Standards Officer, sir. I've reason to believe that these videos are pirate copies, and I'm seizing them, and I propose to make a thorough search of these premises to find out if there are any more. You can't go up there. We can go wherever we want to. I've taken the precaution of obtaining a search warrant. So stand aside, Mr... So I suppose this was your doing? Me? we a little canary, have we? Canary? A grass. Mr. Ryan, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you the owner of this shop, sir? No, the manager. Oh. Who are the owners? Samson Video Limited. Oh, well, it might be a good idea if you informed them immediately. Come on, let's not make a big deal out of this, mate. I mean, I can't help it if my suppliers are bent, can I? Can't we come to some arrangement? Oh, I hope you're not going to attempt to bribe me, mister. What is your name? Owen. Jack Owen. I was getting me comb out, wasn't I? Good. Now I suggest you inform your employers. All right. Red-handed. He was copying. The machines are still running, so I turned them off. The phone, Mr. Owen. All right, all right. And what is your name, sir? Edward Brett. And I've only worked here for two days. Two days. And, of course, you knew nothing about these pirate copies? That's right. Absolutely not. Well, I shall need a statement from you. And your name? Tracy Cummings. And you've only worked here for two days as well, I suppose? No, six weeks. And you knew nothing about these videos? Well, of course not. You don't think I'd risk a run-in with the law of the miserable power I get here, do you? We'll see. Look, neither him nor me had nothing to do with it. If they're fakes, it's got nothing to do with him or me. It's down to Jack. We'll see, girl. Right, well, the boss is on his way. Might as well shut the shop. No point staying open with you lot here. What was all that about canaries eating grass? Ted, stop trying to understand, Jack. It'll take you too long. What's going on here? Your name, sir? Ferrer. Anthony Ferrer, Managing Director of Samson Video Limited. Uh-huh. Well, we found what we believe to be illegal copying of tapes here, sir. Christ. You know about this, Jack? Who are you? Edward Brett. Uh, Mr. Uh, Owen engaged me two days ago. You didn't tell me about this. It's only temporary, a few days. It's very temporary. 
You're fired. On your way. In fact, you're all fired. So pack your things and get out. Look, I'm sure you realize that Samson video had nothing to do with this. And I'm sure you know the law, sir. Yes. Well, I'd be grateful if you'd deal with the firm through our solicitors. This is their card, address, telephone number. Very well, sir. Are you finished with this lot? I want them off my premises. Well, Mr. Brett and Miss Cummings can go. I've got statements from them. I'd rather Mr. Owen stayed. All right. On your way, you two. I'd like you to see upstairs, sir. Mr. Owen was in the process of copying. Of our money. I'll oh, leave it out. The firm will send it to you. I ain't waiting and they won't send him nothing. You'll have to bloody wait. They haven't found those nasties yet, have they? What are you talking about? You know bloody well what I'm talking about. If you're out of luck, love, they've all gone. What? Even the ones under the floorboards? What do you mean? I'll show you if you like. You wouldn't grasp me up, would you? Well, if I was going with my money, I couldn't, could I? You bitch. And him. Two days, wasn't it? Yes. You owe him a week's money. He only worked two days. Well, that ain't his fault. A week. I'll get level with you. Leave it out, Jack. Just pay your dues. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thank that blackmailing bitch behind you. Come on, Ted. So they went for a survey then? Of course not. Ted. Go stand up for yourself round dear. No one else will. Well, you did. Yeah, well, you're a bleeding baby in arms, aren't you? ta -ra. I see old Harry Middleton died. Not surprised, always was a quitter. How old was he? Oh, I don't know. 80 odd, I suppose. Well, that doesn't seem bad going. Well, I suppose not, but he was always threatening to die. You know, always ailing, always moaning about something or other. Played rugger with my eldest brother, Jack. That's right, yes, he played on the second row. Got his neck broken once. Typical. <laughs> I don't suppose he could help that. No, probably I'm being a bit hard on the poor old fella. I'll uh, I'll drop a line to Emily. That's his wife. Oh no, she's dead. Oh well, save the postage. Thank you. And what are you going to do today? Uh, well, I I haven't any plans. You've You've hardly been anywhere since you've been here. Well, I'm sorry if I'm in the way. No, 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 I didn't mean that. It's lovely to have somebody to talk to. But I was thinking of you, young woman that you are. You... It's a bit dreary for you here, isn't it? Oh, no, I've, I've really enjoyed these last few days. A complete rest, a change. Oh, just what I needed. Good. Good. Why don't you go to Kenya? Day. No, no, you know, I mean, I mean, sometime, you know. I've always enjoyed Kenya. It's but all changed now. I haven't been there for years. Oh well, save the packing. Does my, uh, does my butterfly mind uh, bother you? No, not at all. Oh, good. Because everybody's mind is like that, actually, you know. 
skittering here, there and everywhere, all by itself and nobody lets on. They all pretend that their minds are all in order, logical, clear, <laughs> rubbish of course. Now, what are you going to do about this husband of yours? Uh, well, um, nothing for the time being. Aren't you going to put his mind at rest? No, I've, I've tried to do that through my daughter. Oh, good. No point in letting him fret, is there? No. Did he beat you? No. <laughs> Nothing like that. Probably worse. Probably didn't even notice you were there. Said he needed a button sewn on. And do you think he'll be all right till the next button comes off? I think he'll manage. What about you? Me? Yes, you. You're feeling very guilty. Guilty? Yes, guilty. Is it because you left him? No. Then it must have been something you did before that. Oh, well, you don't have to answer. I, mean, I just want you to know, you know, I'm here if you want to talk. And I've still got all my marbles, you know. I know that. And you couldn't shock me. No, I don't think I could. But it would be fun if you tried. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brad? Yes. Michael College, or Please sit down. Thank you. Ah. Well, we were very pleased to receive your application, Mr. Brad. Oh, good. Uh, we noticed that you've had uh, no previous experience in selling insurance before. But it's said in the advertisement. Oh, it's no problem, no problem, Mr. Brad. We rather pride ourselves on our training programme. I'm sure in no time you'll be in line for our best of the month prize. Well, uh... I'd be satisfied with a steady income. <laughs> oh, nonsense, Mr. Brett. The first thing that we have to learn is that we are never happy with this month's figures. I'm sure you'd enjoy a steadily rising income. Well, yes, of course. Every month's figures are the platform to take off from for the next month. Sounds exciting. It is. And that's how you have to regard it, as an exciting challenge. Now, I see that you were formerly professor of literature at university. Yes, that's right. Excellent. Oh. I'm glad someone regards that as a qualification. Well, of course. Now, the sort of clients that we're hoping to attract, Mr. Brett, are people with job security and a regular income. Yes, I see that. And people who have a proper sense of responsibility both to themselves and to any dependents they may have. Yes, I can see that. And, of course, it's to our advantage to have someone who can talk to academics, you know, talk to them in their own language, impress them with his own standing in their world. And, of course, what's to our advantage is to yours as well. Yes. Good. Now, the training. In this firm, we believe in on-the-job training, not sitting for hours in lecture rooms listening to boring old lectures. <laughs> no disrespect intended, Mr. Brett. <laughs> so what we like to do is to send our trainees out with one of our experienced salesmen and watch his technique and study how it's done at first hand. Yes, I see. Good. Now, you understand that what we call cold calling is, in fact, far less efficient than calling on someone to whom one has a, a proper introduction. It avoids the foot-in-the-door approach. Yes. Now, this is what I propose. I want you to draw up a list of all your former colleagues and then, with one of our experienced salesmen, plan a campaign. A campaign? Well, yes, bring them up and make appointments and go along with, uh, let me see... Yes, I think Mr. Mather would be excellent. Then you can introduce him and see how it, how it works. Well, I don't really think that... Um, it's very difficult, you see. Oh? Why? Well, to take advantage of a former relationship seems... Seems what, Mr. Bett? I mean, surely you wouldn't try to sell something that you didn't believe in. Well, no. Well, there you are, then. If you're taking advantage, as you call it, it's simply to introduce them to something that promotes their security in the years ahead. Yes, but... And, of course, it would be profitable for you. 
I mean, naturally, you wouldn't be obtaining full commission whilst training, but uh, an introduction fee would be payable. But if it could be arranged, I'd rather do the training with people that I didn't know. I'd feel much happier about it. Mr. Brett, we should be investing quite a lot of time and quite a lot of capital in you, and we have to be fully sure at the outset that you are properly motivated, that you really want to make a go of it. Well, Mr. Garnishaw, I really do think that approaching former colleagues would be very difficult, and um, I should have to think about it. Well, then you do that. And you wouldn't consider starting me without that list? Well, you have to see it from our point of view. We have to be sure. Well, thank you, Mr. Cardinshaw. I'll let you know. Thank you. Mr. Brett. Look, if you really feel that the personal approach would be too much, perhaps if you wrote some letters and made some phone calls and arranged for one of our representatives to call, we'd be happy to let you have an introduction fee on any successful business. And my on-the-job training? Talk about it afterwards if you still wanted it. It's just my contacts you want, isn't it? Hello. Not at work. <laughs> Charts would be a fine thing. Yes, that's right. You on the door? Yes. <laughs> Great, isn't it? Still. Would you like a cup of coffee? They're nearly all up now. Oh, that's right. Peggy said you were a professor or something. I was a professor. What do you do? Dance. Oh, really? That sounds interesting. It is when you're doing it. Well, what sort of dance do you do? Ballet? No. I started that way as a girl, but there ain't much call for black guy and swans. <laughs> Evidently, black swans live forever. <laughs> the way they get their bread from with all these white feathers about, God knows. <laughs> So you do modern dance? Yeah, I'm trying. But it's mainly disco stuff, you know. I've been on telly twice. Oh, that's good. You like dance? Yes, we had some um, visiting companies at the university. But to be honest, I missed words. And by the end of the evening, I was dying for someone to say something. <laughs> yes, I need words. Ah, you sure got enough of those. Yes. I had an audition this morning for a new musical, but... Oh, well, something will turn up. Oh, is that what people say to you? Yes. And does it? Not so far, now. Great live, isn't it? Still, I get by. I do this job, telephone surveying, two or three times a week. Oh, what's that? You sell things over the phone? No, not selling. Market research. You just ring up a bunch of numbers and you ask them if they eat margarine or folk labour or anything. It depends on what the client wants. How did you get into that? Quite a few actors and dancers do it. You know, it's casual. If you're out of work, it's a bit of money. Are they all young? <laughs> There's some real oldies working there. <laughs> I mean, I could put your name down if you want me to. Oh, would you? May as well do something. OK. You know what you really ought to do is to get into books. Oh, I've written to every publisher there is. No, I don't mean publishing them. I mean selling. You must know a lot about old books. Quality's exceptional. And the pictures, well, you can see. Oh, beautiful. And 320 is your best price. Right? Absolutely. You can see it's listed at 385. Well, I'll have to think about it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Can I help you, sir? Um, no, thank you. I was just browsing. Oh, go ahead, please. Is trade good? 
That's terrible. Uh, same as everything else. I'm afraid so. Look at Charing Cross Road. It used to be full of antiquarian bookshops. Now it's full of nothing but cut-price remainder shops. Yes. It's getting so that any book over two years old is an antiquarian book. Are you a collector? Um, well, I, I, I have been in a very small way. What's your interest? 18th century novels. An expensive interest? Yes. I do have one or two. Well, actually, Miss... Mr. Steiner. Steiner. Yes. Actually, I, I wasn't um, looking for a book, but uh, a job. A job? Yes. You see, I've recently retired from university teaching, and um, I thought I might be able to use my knowledge of books. I'm afraid I couldn't use an assistant. Oh, no, I, I didn't imagine I could just walk into a shop and pick up a job, but... Um, actually, I, I don't uh, really know what I wanted. Advice, I suppose. Like Bernard Shaw's advice to those about to get married. Don't. Yes. In the first place, you'd need stock, and that's very expensive. But if you're a collector, you'll have some already, I presume. Oh, I, I wouldn't want to sell my books. In that case, I should give up the idea. You can't be a collector and a dealer unless you're very rich. If you can't bear to part with a book, you'd make a rotten dealer anyway. Come in. Well, I'm sorry, am I disturbing you? No. It's just I thought I'd return this. It was absolutely marvellous. Oh, good. Are you all right? Yes, why? No, you're not. What's happened? Nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. If you don't want no, to tell me, then I'll... Nothing's happened. That's what's wrong. Oh, I see. Each day seems to get worse. It's hopeless. I had an interview this morning. Well, that's a start. For a job as an insurance salesman. Oh, I see. They didn't want you. No, they never did, I could tell. All they wanted was for me to introduce them to my former colleagues. Bastards. Then I tried to get a job in a bookshop, and the proprietor told me quite rightly, I'm sure, that I wasn't suitable. Oh, Edward. Oh, it is hard. You said to me, you cap it all with sympathy. I think that might be the last straw. you need is a drink. No, what I need is a job. First, the drink. Oh, you're very kind. Oh, rubbish. You did the same for me? Well, probably not. Probably I wasn't even noticed you were miserable. But it's true, isn't it? That's what I did for three years. And not just with somebody who lives in the top flat, but with a woman in the same bed. Edward, you'll have to let yourself off the hook. You'll drive yourself mad thinking like that. Well, what worries me is that's precisely what I am. Oh, Edward. Well, isn't madness a separation from reality, a total unawareness of what's going on? And everything that's happening to me takes me by surprise. It's as I've travelled to the moon. I don't understand what's happening. Apart from you, the people that I meet could be Martians. What they say and what they do takes me by surprise. Well, it is a different world for you. Well, it bloody well shouldn't be. I've lived in this world for 55 years and I've moved just over a hundred miles to a city I thought I knew well. Not a couple of light years to another planet, and that's what it feels like. So either I was mad all those years or I'm mad now, and either way, it's horrible. Here, I'll drink this. Oh, dear, dear, dear. But what you're saying is good, because it is true. So if I'm being rational now, I must have been mad before. It doesn't help thinking like that, Edward. It's unproductive and unprofitable. Well, what should I think? The thing is to understand it. You have to come to terms with it. And how do I do that? Well, maybe you should get professional advice. What sort of advice? Well, there's psychotherapy, or you could see a psychiatrist. No. No. Oh. no I, I, I'm not saying you're not right, but I couldn't bear it. But I couldn't bear it, not now. And I know that's conclusive proof that I need it, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't bear it, not now. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just relax, cry. <laughs> oh, I haven't cried since. <laughs> not even when Mary went. Well, you should have. 
Do you realize that's the first time you've used your wife's name? It's always been my wife or my former wife or Simon's mother. Oh, dear, I did have a handkerchief. Will that be big enough? Oh, Edward. <laughs> oh. What am I going to do? I think you should find your wife. How do I do that? Well, I may only be an amateur, but it seems to me that you can't come to terms with yourself until you know more. Oh, it's all very well, but what would that do? Well, there are ways. That's where I am professional, but not tonight. But tomorrow, Edward, tomorrow we'll sort something out. Oh, at least I am grateful. Mm -hmm.